morning, everybody. Um, and we are once again joined by the uh, lovely Angela Davy, um, and she's going to continue the series of Wales and what's actually going on in Wales as the Wales expert. Um, so, and I just wonder if we sort of fast forward the clock on, um, could you explain a little bit about the next stage? I understand that the next stage that we're kind of looking at in the um, Renting Homes Wales Act is going to be from April. So I just yeah, wonder yeah. if you could give us the next stage and what's going to happen from there. Fine. Okay. Well, it may be sort of end of March, early April, um, but the next stage um, will happen when the prescribed information will be released. So prescribed forms, um, which will show what happens to the tenancy deposit, which of course is, is really, really important. Um, the protection needs to be in there and that will be produced in the next phase. Um, we're going to review all the decisions um, to extend or terminate introductory or prohibited uh, contract standard contracts. So if we if we are talking about um, if, if we go back to a short short old tenancies, those tenancies um, were reviewed, if you remember, by trading standards. Mm -hmm. So that will be done um, as part of the next phase, just to make sure that there aren't any conflicts of interest or anything that uh, we feel tenants won't understand. Um, all the prescribed information is all around deposit schemes, as, as you know, and the, the next thing, um, which will be a great thing, I think, to us is uh, the abandonment um, situation. So when a tenant literally disappears from a property, there will be now more ways and an easier route for landlords to take those properties back. Because at the so moment, we have nothing, do we? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us more about, you know, the abandonment, how that's going to work. Okay. So if we go back to um, sort of in my time, if you like, when I was actually taking properties back, it was quite complicated. Uh, landlords had to go through a series of time scales, and then sometimes they'd have to hang on to tenants' uh, belongings and all of that. So within this act, um, there's a section which is section 220. It gives the landlords the right to, to actually recover their property, um, which has been abandoned without um, actually having to go to court, okay, which is great. So the landlord can give uh, the tenant or the contractors uh, notice, um, and that can be done um, by giving them four weeks notice since they have discovered that the property is empty. OK, so those notices will be put inside the property and the landlord can just wait uh, four weeks. During that four weeks, the landlord would just make general inquiries to see if the tenant has actually gone to work or trace through a previous address. If there is absolutely no sight or sound, then the landlord, just after four weeks, can recover possession of that property. Can, can I just so clarify one really thing with you? You know, yeah, it will be. Um, um, but one so, thing you just said was um, the, the notice has to be put inside the property. Yes. Um, so when you say inside the property, does that mean inside through the letterbox or you can physically open the door? Because I know that at the moment, you know, it's like on our legislation as it stands, you're not allowed to go in until you've actually, you know, gone through to make sure it's it's actually abandoned. You literally so, serve the notice in exactly the same as you would serve any other notice. Uh, through the door, through the letterbox, through the letterbox still, you know, yeah. registered post, whatever yeah. you do now yeah. Yeah. to serve your same. notices. So you, you would yeah. you would do exactly the same. Yes. Um, if then after you've taken possession back of your property, so if within six months of, of recovering, um, then the contract holder, you know, suddenly appears and wishes to contest anything that, you, that you've actually done, yeah. then that person would have to get a court order, right? Okay. And it's under section 222. 
Yeah. Because yeah. basically the landlord has gone through all the processes, the new abandonment processes under these new contracts. Yeah. So if a tenant six months later decides, oh, hang on a minute, I want, I want to get back into that property. The mm -hmm. only way that that tenant can get back into the property um, is through the courts. So it actually makes it far easier yeah. for yeah. landlords and a little bit more difficult for tenants that have actually done something wrong. Yes, yes, because before um, a landlord could actually be sued for, you know, taking away their home. So yep. it was an yep. absolute nightmare. So, so this actually negates all of that and it's actually yes. a far safer bet for yeah. your landlords to be able to know that this is a... A yeah. much better route to go down that sounds that sounds very positive yeah do you know what maxine i was thinking about this when we were going through the, this act and i think it was a bit of a trade-off because we have to or the landlords have to give six months notice i mean that has never been the case has it ever ever mm -hmm. and i think that to balance that up then you know our senate our welsh government had to give something back to a landlord yeah. and particularly in abandonment cases where yeah. you know the 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 um the activity which is going through the senate at the moment is to bring as many properties as they can back onto the rental market because as everywhere else in the country we just don't have enough property mm -hmm. um to to for the demand that we have for from new tenants yeah. so you know to make this abandonment procedure far mm. clearer and cleaner for landlords i think is a great thing it will bring yeah. a lot of properties back in that yes. would have been out for six months yeah that's true but just on that six months because obviously that is a huge great big sea change from the you know two months and you can go to court and all this sort of thing that, that we all know and we've all got used to over many many years um six months is a long time so i'm sure viewers as well as myself are thinking to themselves well what happens if somebody just stops paying the rent is there a, a shortcut to be able yeah, to get yeah. around that absolutely there are shortcuts cuts for breaches of tenancy agreements so in really? the same way um as you know particularly with rental arrears you know if we're citing rental arrears then of course that is a breach of tenancy a very strong um breach of tenancy which will give the landlord a shorter route to possession so yeah. all is not lost That's what good. they're trying to do is to keep good tenants in properties yeah for as long as possible. Mm. But if tenants um, decide not to be good tenants and start breaching the terms of their agreement, then the landlord has the right to go to court and to do that in the same way as they do now. And um, because of these changes, um, does that mean that this would shortcut the huge great big delays of, of going to court at the moment or? Well, yeah. It, it yeah, does. I mean, you know, for, for a start off, you know, you don't have to go to court for, for abandonment, yeah. you know, I mean, how many landlords are queuing up in courts to get abandonments mm -hmm. um, turned over? So, yeah, I mean, the whole point of this is to take the, the, the weight from the courts yeah. um, and give it to a little bit more power back to landlords. Yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking more um, of the delays that the courts actually have at the moment with yeah, COVID well, and everything else. I guess it would still be, or, or have the Senate so. thought about that? And is this something yeah, that I mean, be able to help? We're talking uh, between now and the 15th of July. Yes. So hopefully between now and then, mm. a lot of issues have been resolved. Yeah. Um, but here in Wales, they are still thinking of uh going for property courts so there mm. is there is hope and i and i i really really hope that this actually happens yes. um that there is hope that property courts will actually be separate um so housing matters and property matters will be held separate from civil matters yeah. so there's hope that that will happen in wales along with these changes who knows what, and to get to that kind of final stage, I understand there's a few more bits to go yeah. through in May and then 
15th of July is the go live day. So I just wonder if you could literally run us through that final stage of, of the springtime, then going into the summer, and then what it's going to really look like when it's all put together. So over to you. Thank you. OK. <laughs> right. So um, basically, I would I would say springtime. If we if we look at look forward to to springtime, um, there will be uh, landlord guidance, which is going to come out through um, through the Welsh government website. So the guidance will help landlords how to um, use the model written statements and contracts. Okay, so they will have um, a how to guide if you like um, which will be launched and they will be able to follow that guide so that they can create these these new um, contracts if you like um, and there will all also be what they call a, an easy read guide um, to the rent in homes act itself for both landlords and tenants mm -hmm. so instead of having to go through multiple pages of legislation it will be a sort of a leaflet for one for landlords one for tenants just to let them know what the changes are and how it's all happening how um, will they get yeah. those guidance where, where will they be available from and, and how will your land spring, well they're saying springtime so i'm hoping it could be like march you know, okay. could be any time. Um, so and what will they be available uh, in your offices or will you be uh, emailing? Or they're, they're how will they be actually um, available to the landlords and, and to the agents? Rent Smart Wales are the people that circulate all this information. Okay. And they've taken on board a marketing um, company, if you like. Yeah. And they are releasing this information Okay. right the way across Wales to all landlords, all agents. So this is going to be really easy to, yeah, to, to, yeah. very, very easy, very yeah. easy. So it's not a case of having to go to a website and download something. Yeah. Everything is going to come out by email. That's excellent. Because in Wales, we have a huge register. So every landlord in Wales is registered. Um, the details of their property, who the tenants are, when they went in, all of that thing. So there's such a huge database within Rent Smart Wales that they can use to disseminate information. It's yeah. really, really good. So that's how the information is going to come out. And then just before, I would think, um, the go live date, the fitness for um, human habitation for contract holders. So in other words, a contract holder is a tenant. So if a contract holder or tenant thinks that their property is not fit for human habitation, there's going to be a guidance document for them to follow to make sure that they can check to see that the landlord um, is keeping up um, their end in terms of fitness human habitation within their tenancy. That will be out and the written statement guide for tenants as well that'll be an easy read guide for tenants just so that they absolutely understand exactly what these new contracts are going to look like when they have to um when they come into force in the middle of july mm -hmm. and then of course on the 15th of july mm -hmm. any um assured short hold tenancies that are out there and in force will automatically convert to the new prescribed standard contracts so everything which is sitting in your managed book if you are a managing agent mm -hmm. and it and it is a standard assured short hold tenancy it will either then become a secure contract a, a standard contract or a standard periodic contract depending on the length of the tenancy who the landlord is and who the tenant is. So that will actually happen on the 15th of, of July. Mm -hmm. However, what the minister has said, um, the minister has given another six months grace, okay, to landlords, agents, yeah. um, just in case they make a few 
errors in maybe issuing new contracts or giving notice or that kind of thing. So there is going to be another six months grace from the 15th of July onwards, just in case some errors are made um, and, you know, they can be put right. So I think that they've been quite fair because they've given us more than six months lead time mm -hmm. to the due date where it all goes live in the middle of July. And they're also giving us another six months after that to put right any mistakes that were, hey, we're bound to make. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure that I'm not the only one in thinking about this because, um, you know, this, is, this must be a question that comes up time and time again. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what happens if a landlord um, what's because the, the section 21 is obviously not going to be valid anymore you won't even have a section 21 so basically it's almost turning it into an assured uh, a tenancy instead of an assured uh, a, a short sorry <laughs> instead of turning it in from um, you know the, this that security that a landlord has at the moment you're turning it into a tenancy which is actually almost like non-breakable so when a landlord then decides that he needs to sell or, or the circumstances change, how will your landlords be able to get their properties back um, without the Section 21? You know, what? how will they actually be able to get them back if they're sort of in a tenancy, which you explained at the beginning, is, it is always going to be around sort of 12 months? Mm -hmm. Okay, so within the fixed term, okay, then you know, you can't, you can't serve notice, okay? But if yes. you allow the fixed term to go into periodic, yes. so it all, all, of a, all of a sudden, it becomes a periodic tenancy. Yes. So month to month for a tenant, but for a landlord, six months notice. So yes. as long as the landlord outside of a fixed term gives a six month notice and it's a notice 173 which replaces the section 21 then it's perfectly fine for the landlord to get his property back is is there any kind of exceptions to that you know if a landlord if the landlord for instance needs that property back because it was their primary main home and they went to work overseas for instance and then they came back is is there any kind of thing um, that would be an exception to that role? Nothing that I know of at the moment, okay? Um, at the moment, it is a six month notice period. Yeah. However, if a landlord has got, I think, a good relationship with the tenant, yeah. it's great to talk, isn't it? And explain yeah. situations. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as a tenant is happy to move out early, and they've got somewhere else to go, then I can't see why um, it would stop a landlord taking a property back in an emergency yes. um, at the end of the day. I mean, we are used to dealing with relationships, aren't we? we you know, are. as yeah. agents, we've yeah. got to sit there in the middle and try um, to keep two, two parties on good terms. I yeah. think it's going to stretch our, our abilities, if you like, in certain yeah. circumstances. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that, um, you know, as long as people are communicating and as long as people are talking, it's when one person says, uh, no, you know, I don't have to move out. I will move out at the end of the six months notice period. Then I think, you know, if a tenant digs their heels in, then there will be issues. But yeah. hey, let's just keep fingers crossed and see if we can keep people happy. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, this is all so new. This is a complete oh, sea change. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's very much you're going to be feeling it, experiencing it and, and being able to come back and give us this sort of feedback. So, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is brilliant. Uh, and, you know, just talking to you and, and going through this and seeing how this is going to un unfold um, is going to be really good to actually see what the outcome is. And uh, obviously it, it's such early doors, but it does sound really positive, I have to say. Yeah, for, 
for me, I mean, I've been a practitioner for over 30 years and I've seen so many changes. I suppose the biggest change was um, uh, tenancy deposit uh, protection. That was a massive thing. And we all thought, oh, my God, you know, yeah. we're losing yeah. control of our bonds. And, you know, hey, that's nothing now. You know, no. I mean, as, as time goes on and changes happen, um, I can see why large government have done this right it makes sense to me because i know what the housing stock in wales can look like and there are some pretty bad properties out there that are being rented by agents um to to tenants and and representing landlords you know so this this fitness for for human habitation thing is a massive thing and it will be it will bring into into play things that haven't come in before such as um wired smoke alarms in mm. all rented accommodation you know within the private rental sector um the electrical tests will be mandatory you know um yeah. and that that's something i think that we need to be you know getting ourselves ready for here in wales because hey mm. to get to get an electrician now is hard enough you mm. know when <laughs> what's it going to be like when it's coming nearer the time where yeah. every property has got to have an ICR certificate. You and know. we have that um, here in, in England, you know, as you it, know it, so. It's going to impact yeah. on, on most things, yes. but we have yeah. had enough notice mm. for us to be able to handle it, which yeah. I, I think, you know, we're really grateful for. Uh, interesting question that you came, that you, you was talking about where you said that the uh, fitness for human habitation yeah. um, and every tenant will be targeted by the Welsh Government and then um, they will be completing a form prior to go live date. Mm -hmm. um, and then you actually then said uh, that there are some um, pretty dire properties out there. Yeah. It will certainly be interesting to get your feedback. Um, between May and and uh, go live date or begin uh, middle of July uh, to see how many tenants come forward and and what the outcome is because yeah. hopefully you know this yeah. is going to actually be a great thing for tenants as well to be able to have far better living accommodation so yeah. this is this is quite positive really I know you know our, our business is obviously getting the landlords and helping the landlords but but we also know there's a lot of landlords out there that aren't as ethical as, as others. And, you know, I, I personally really find it quite frustrating when you see tenants that are living in poor accommodation. No need for it, you know. So. There, is, there is no need, but unless um, you can bring into place legislation to yeah. stop that, yeah. then it will always happen. Yeah. So for me, um, I think it, it's a good thing. I'm remaining positive. Yeah. Um, as I said at the beginning, you know, landlords are coming to us yeah. um, as the professionals yeah. to say, help us, you know, what, what can you do? Give yeah. us advice, yeah. um, take over the management for a bit because we're, we're a little bit nervous. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think it, it, it's going to be a very, very good thing for yeah. good agents and for regulated agents. Yeah. So I'm feeling quite positive about it. Of course, you know, if you talk to me, maybe 12 months down the line, I may not be so positive. A few more think. gray hairs, eh? <laughs> <laughs> quite. <laughs> Oh, no. Well, let's hope not. Uh, to me, you know, it's like you certainly sold it to me. If I was in Wales, um, <laughs> I'd be quite happy. It's it does sound very positive, and I certainly will look forward to your feedback as it goes through implementation. But I'd like to thank you so much for your time again today um, for educating us. Um, and uh, you know, let's watch this space and let's see what actually happens. And and I, well, I certainly will look forward to talking to you about it as it progresses through the line. So thank you, Ange. No problem at all. Nice to speak to you. And you. Bye now. Bye.